You just started teaching second grade, and with back-to-school season quickly approaching, you're probably wondering which activities you should be teaching during the first week of school. How do I know this? Well, I was in your shoes when I switched from kindergarten to second grade. You see, a couple of years ago, I did a quick transition from teaching kindergarten at one district to moving to a completely different district and teaching second grade. Now, while I was excited, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to teach during that first week of school. In the past, I had taught my kindergartners the kissing hand, but that didn't seem really appropriate for my second graders. I couldn't choose something really complicated, but I also didn't want to choose the kissing hand because it seemed a little bit babyish for my second graders, and I also knew that it was a pretty common thing to teach in the primary grade level, so I wanted something a little bit different. So that's when I stumbled upon this lesson. And it was an absolute game changer, and I'm going to be sharing with you this lesson in this video, so make sure to stick around. Now, something you may not know about me is I really enjoy bringing books to life. So, for example, I really enjoy the Harry Potter series growing up. So, in my second grade classroom, I actually made an entire Harry Potter-themed classroom. Now, this didn't just stop here. During that first week of school, I really enjoy bringing books to life and introducing activities around these themes because it's a lot easier to plan out, but it also keeps my students engaged and to have fun. So that's why during this first week of school, I didn't focus on the kissing hand. Instead, I focused on this story, how to fill your bucket or how full is your bucket for kids. Now, I really enjoyed the story. If you're not familiar with it, it's about a boy who wakes up and he sees buckets and it talks about bucket filling versus bucket dipping. Bucket filling is when you're feeling happy or excited and then your bucket is filled, whereas if your bucket is getting lower with water, it dips and therefore your bucket is getting emptier. And this book talks about how we all have buckets and we can fill each other's buckets by doing something nice or giving each other a compliment. And when we fill each other's buckets, not only am I putting a drop of water in your bucket, I'm also putting it in mine. Whereas we can also dip from each other's buckets by being negative or doing something that's not exactly a bucket filler or is considered bucket dipping. So for example, if I were to knock over somebody's blocks, that would be bucket dipping causing a drop to dip from your bucket. One of the reasons I really wanted to focus on this story is because I love the overall theme of being a bucket filler versus bucket dipping. And I really like setting that tone for the rest of the school year. So what I would do when it came to the first week of school, after my students either ate breakfast in the classroom or in the cafeteria, I would have them come in and we would read the story together. While we were reading, I would typically ask my students questions and I even would have a bucket to demonstrate the different things that we're discussing in the book. So for example, I got these buckets from Dollar Tree and what we would do is I would do the read aloud typically by the sink or with a water bottle or some water in the buckets. And then I would have two buckets and I would talk about how you can fill the water or the bucket with more water or if you are doing something mean or negative, people can actually dip or a drop can fall from your bucket. And providing this visual element really helps your students really kind of understand and comprehend the story at a, lar at a much larger level. I got these buckets from Dollar Tree, so definitely keep an eye out for those. They're super cheap and I love them because then what I would do is I would get a bucket for every student so they could do bucket filling notes when they are done with their work, but more on that later. After we read this story out loud as a class and we talked about bucket filling versus bucket dipping, we would then talk about what that would look like in the class. We'd have an open discussion about how we can be bucket fillers in class and what would be considered bucket dipping in class. Then using that same discussion and using the why we wanna be bucket fillers instead of bucket dippers, we would come up with our classroom roles. Typically we come up with these as a class. I have some idea set up ahead of time, but we would set up our rules and then I would have my students sign the rules kind of like a contract. That way later I can refer back to the rules that we decided to agree on as a class. After we did the discussion and came up with our classroom rules using the bucket filling and bucket dipping, I would do a scavenger hunt around the class. What I would do is I would hide numbers one through 20 throughout the class 
the classroom and I would hide them in specific places that I knew I wanted to teach different areas and different procedures. So for example, I might hide one over in the student center as the first one and then we would discuss what is included in the student center. We would talk about how students would turn things in and where they can get their extra supplies and then I might even dive in and start teaching those procedures on what it looks like and sounds like. I would also hide them, like I said, not only in different areas, so whole group area, student center, and then maybe your pack up area, but I would also hide it specifically where I wanted to teach a procedure. So for example, maybe I hid one over at the whole group area by our carpet. That would give me an opportunity to then discuss what it should look like and sound like and teach that procedure in depth. Now in general, I try to focus on three to five procedures per week. If my students seem to have a very good grasp on those procedures, then I'll expand. But focusing on three to five procedures and then building off of that is ensuring that you're having a strong foundation for your classroom and that you can practice throughout the week so your students can get that much closer to having mastery in that procedure. Now my overall rule and my overall goal in my classroom management is to have my procedure set out so well that my students can run the classroom by themselves by the end of the year. That's always what I shoot for. So one way I do this is I always talk about what each procedure looks like and sounds like. And then I also discuss the why. So I have that buy-in from my students and they understand the importance of why that procedure is set the way it is. After we do the scavenger hunt, the next thing we like to do is we like to write about it. We write about our first day of school and how we were either bucket filling or bucket dipping, and then also how we expect the classroom to run, what we learned about bucket being a bucket filler, and then what we are excited about in the upcoming school year. But writing about it is not only a great way to assess where your students are at, but it also allows you to send something cute at home and kind of let your families know that you'll be practicing bucket filling and bucket dipping in the classroom and in general what those terms mean because some families haven't read the story before. In general, on the last day of school, I also like to do other bucket filling activities or around this book. For example, I might pick out second grade math activities, writing activities, or specific grammar activities that have to do with the bucket filling theme. And in general, I do activities not only to build on the foundations and teach my students procedures, but I also like to assess where they're at. So in second grade, you're going to be covering two digit addition and subtraction all the way up to three digit. So I like to assess my students in the beginning of the year to make sure they have that one digit down within 20, that addition down. So that might be one activity you wanna look for. A great place to get resources like this is at TPT. I will make sure to link some down in the description down below. That wraps up my first day of school activities for second grade. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you are a new teacher in, prim in the primary grade levels, I highly recommend you check out this guide where I answer any more questions or the top 10 questions I get when it comes to teaching at the primary grade levels, including everything you need to set up for second grade classroom. I'll talk to you soon, teacher bestie. Bye.